So we talked last time about how the psych chart was put together, what the labels mean, what the axes represent, and we left off with enthalpy, which is really the last axis that we're going to discuss, but has a fair amount of importance as it's really the only representation of energy that we have on the psych chart. And it's going to be critical when we talk about load sizing and estimating the energy usage involved with different processes. So we're going to talk about the derivation of enthalpy, what it means, and then how it's plotted on the site chart. So going back to the first law of thermodynamics that tells us that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, we can imagine looking at a process and trying to do an energy balance. Where's that energy going? Formulaically, in thermodynamics, it looks like this. Graphically, we can picture that process and account for work or heat going in or out of the process, and then at the inputs and outputs, trying to account for the elevation changes, the velocity changes, the flow work involved there, and then the temperature. So lucky for us, a lot of those terms fall off just due to how small they are relative to the remaining terms, and we can collect the remaining terms and put them in a nice convenient package called enthalpy. And that's really all enthalpy represents is a combination of these leftover terms. I have a fair amount of recurrence in thermodynamics and used in other fields such as chemistry, but it's really just capturing the internal energy and the flow work of a given state. We assign the letter H and we call it enthalpy. The terms here that we're going to use are BTU per pound of dry air. So British thermal units per pound of air without any moisture in it. So it's really specific enthalpy, but we're just going to call it enthalpy. So it has a lot of uh, applications in psychrometrics where we may talk about the enthalpy change for a heat exchanger, uh, the enthalpy change across fan and how much fan heat you pick up, and also mixing air streams in like an economizer. But on the psych chart, we can look at it here. It has a very similar axis as wet bulb, but those lines of constant enthalpy are slightly different angle than those of the wet bulb lines. But similarly, it does go from bottom left, from lower to top right, uh, increasing value of enthalpy. Here it's about 0 to 50 on a standard ASHRAE sea level chart. And when we plot these, we're going to see things like this. So here we're representing 9 BTU per pound changes in these processes, or uh, delta H, even though we have different moisture content and we have different varying degrees of temperature changes, we're always going to lead, we're always going to track these up on the enthalpy axis and read them similarly to how we do with wet bulb. So as another example to I explain how this is going to matter going forward is if we look at a couple different states and we wanted to intuitively understand which one had less energy, we can look at 55 degree air that's saturated all the way on the left and then fairly dry air on the right that's 100 degrees and we may ask the question which has less energy content. So there's actually two lines of constant enthalpy at play here so we can see that because enthalpy captures the sensible and latent components of a given state that you can have much colder air that has the same or less energy content than more moist uh, warmer air and this is going to be critical when we talk about things like optimizing economizers which can really mean a great deal many things but what it typically will mean is telling an economizer when you have return air and outside air meeting up which one to favor because it's going to have less energy content so we need to know not just the temperature of the air but we're going to want to make informed decisions about what we think we know about the overall energy content of that air that's going to wrap up our discussion about how the psych chart is put together I've put some additional references here for any uh, any follow-up that you may want to do feel free to leave comments if you think I left something out or if there's more clarification but now our conversation is going to go more towards how you use the site chart now that we know how it's put together.